booby shot again. Double the boobs. Hello? May I focus? I don't even know. Hi guys, welcome to Shella Mama. Um, I was trying to film this while she was napping, but it kind of took me a lot longer to get my stuff together. So she's just gonna be my little helper today. This is Evelyn. She is my first. I am 38 weeks. I was like eight months, but I'm basically nine months pregnant with her little sister. Even though I am a second time mom, I don't remember a damn thing that I packed in my hospital bag. So um, we're doing a video on that today, and I have been scouring the internet trying to find what first time moms are packing, what second time moms are packing, some third time moms are putting out videos. Um, and what I've come to find is a lot of them are pretty bougie and that is not me and I don't know if it's you. So this video is gonna be kind of cheaper options, realistic options, um, trying to remember a little bit about how pregnancy went, first time in the hospital, I should say labor. Play with your toys. There's three things that I want to try to accomplish with this video is I want to try to keep it short because some of the videos out there are like 30 minutes long. I want to keep it real for what you really need. It's very minimalistic. And um, three, I want to talk about some items that um, people aren't talking about. Like they're not in their hospital bags. And I don't know if they're just leaving them out or if they're just not packing them. But um, there's a couple items that I really want to talk about in this video. So. Uh, this is a $25 bag from Walmart inside as far as clothes go. I am packing um, some slippers to walk around the hospital in. I do have some slipper socks. My feet were way too swollen to wear these with Evie, my first, um, but my feet haven't been so swollen this time, so I'm gonna bring these again. Make sure that you have the grips on the bottom because you don't wanna be slipping and falling in the hospital. The one thing I will say is a robe. You don't need a super fancy or expensive one. If you want to be cutesy and get a matching one for pictures, by all means do so. But this was probably from Ross or Walmart. I'll bet you it's not more than $10 because I don't spend that much money. Um, people say to bring like three nursing bras, but guys, that to me is ridiculous. When I was learning how to breastfeed, when Evie was learning how to breastfeed, because you and your baby both have to learn. What I found easiest are these camis from, again, Walmart. They're literally less than $2. It doesn't matter if you stain them, stretch them out, whatever, because they're just for breastfeeding. But it is way easier to just pull down, pull out a boob, breastfeed, than try to mess with clips, sports bras, whatever. I mean, by all means, get the cute stuff, but you really don't need it and when you're learning. It's, it's very hard. For going home, I've heard two things. Either you want it tight to keep everything in place or you want it really loose fitting. So um, I just have a normal t-shirt and um, I have a couple different options for the bottom depending on how I'm feeling that day, depending on what the weather is. You always wanna keep that in mind. Um, I am due in August, but we did just have like a rainstorm. So we've been having some of those. If that happens again, I wanna be prepared. So I have like a thick, um, set of sweatpants and then I have like a thin flowy pair of pants and then I have just some pajama shorts again Walmart like six bucks so that's it that's all the clothes that I really have I am giving birth in the middle of the pandemic so I do have some mask options I'm sure the hospital will provide but these ones are a little bit cuter and they're my own so um, that's pretty nice so that is it can you believe it I know right two shirts some bottoms yeah. and a row next toiletries you just want to do your standard toiletries you guys whatever you use in your home um, my advice is to just get doubles so that you can be packed and ready to go instead of trying to gather up your last minute items the things that you use every day yeah. um, and trying to pack those on the way to the hospital so get doubles, um, get cheaper versions even. I think I got all of these from the travel section or the dollar store, so they're a buck. Deodorant, Q-tips, face and body wipes, toothbrush, tissues, and then as far as makeup, it was the first time I brought like all my makeup and I didn't use any of it. So this time around, I'm just bringing foundation and a thing of mascara just to look a little bit more lively during my pictures. Um, I pick up my nails when I'm bored. I feel like I always need fingernail clippers. So I do just have like a mini Manny set. Whatever toiletries you feel comfortable with, just make sure you guys get doubles of them so that you can be packed and ready to go. Um, I do have two separate bags. That one is for things that I don't need as often. This one has things that I'm probably gonna need a little bit more often. 
Uh, one video, one mom mentioned having like a handheld fan. Never thought of it, but I had one lying around, so I'm gonna give it a go. I was in labor with Evelyn for 19 hours, and so maybe I wish I had had that, I don't remember. Um, our own hand sanitizer for the way home. The hospital, again, is gonna have really everything you need. Um, I have some calming jasmine lavender body butter. That's pretty much the only lotion I'm bringing. There was another mom that mentioned to bring gum. Gum normally makes me sick, but I have this small pack lying around. This is your number one, guys. This is on every mama's list. There is not a single mother out there that will tell you not to bring chapstick because you just, you just, you just need it. Um, extra hair ties and bobby pins keep my bangs up out of the way. I really don't plan on doing anything with my hair than having it up and out of my face, really. As far as electronics go, you guys can bring, you know, whatever. Um, there is really not a video out there that will tell you not to have one of those long charging cords. Um, this is like six to 10 feet, I think, and I luckily already had it. I don't remember it being an issue with my first, but I definitely don't want it to be an issue with my second, especially because everything is on your phone these days, so. The movies I'm going to be watching, the games I'm going to be playing, all the social media that I'm going to be posting to is all on my phone. So I definitely want to make sure that that is charged and ready to go. Um, so any chargers, and again guys, just make sure you have doubles. You're going to forget your charger next to your bed. A lot. It seems like a lot of moms go into labor like in the middle of the night. So um, I'm sure the last thing on your mind is going to be your charger. You might even have a list or whatever, but just get, just get, just get two, okay? Um, this is my selfie stick. I just found it recently. So I have never really used it too much, but um, because of the pandemic, yes, baby. Because of the pandemic, nobody's allowed to be in the delivery room except for me and my husband. I don't know if I'll use it, but I'm definitely gonna bring it. I want to use it. We're gonna bring it. And then your headphones and um, any iPads, laptops, whatever. That's up to you. But everybody does mention to bring like a water bottle with a straw. Um, I wasn't allowed to eat or drink literally anything for the 19 hours that I was in labor the first time So I don't remember this being an issue and then afterwards like they bring you water and stuff But my husband just bought me this so I do want to bring it so if you guys notice there are a couple things that I am not bringing um, I'm not bringing any postpartum items no diapers no crazy postpartum panties you know no medicated stuff or anything down there because your hospital will provide it for you. And if you're unsure or, um, you know, just double check, just ask your gyno, ask on your hospital tour um, what they're providing. But I I don't need, I don't need any of it. You don't, you don't need it, okay? It's just gonna take up space. Um, I'm not bringing any nip cream, no boob pads. My milk didn't even come in until four days later. Uh, if you're a first time mom, your milk might not come in until later anyway, so. I'm not worried about leaking or chapped nipples. I'm just not this go around. Yes, baby. I am not bringing any labor gowns or anything bougie like that. Um, I just find it so unnecessary, um, especially where you can't have professional pictures taken right now during the COVID pandemic. So, um, and then if you guys noticed, I am not packing anything that has to do with the shower. And I know that probably sounds so gross and you guys are like, Trish, WTF, like what do you mean you're not gonna take a shower? It's two days of my life. It'll probably be the grossest two days of my life. But the first time I did take a shower and I brought the flip flops, I brought the towel, I brought all the toiletries for the shower. Here, the shower is this big. It's barely big enough to turn around in. And um, I just found it to be more claustrophobic and more frustrating than anything. Just trying to shower and trying to stay like sanitary because everybody's like oh you gotta you know hospitals are gross whatever um and just keeping track of all that stuff it just it just seemed super unnecessary so i'm just gonna deal with it for two days i've got my wipes and my stuff to freshen up but not only that but the first shower you take when you get home after delivering a baby is the most euphoric shower of your entire life so I'm just gonna hold out until then and it'll just be an extra amazing shower. Seriously, best shower of your life. So I'm just gonna wait for that in my own home with my own stuff on my own time and not have to worry about your feet getting dirty or you know, a flip flop breaking in, in the gross shower of the hospital, so whatever. And then baby items, I am not packing any diapers, any wipes, anything like that for the baby because again, the hospital will provide all of it. 
Um, of course, you can always, always, always double check and make sure that you are prepared and ready to go. So, brings me to the baby bag. Um, I did not take any pictures with Evelyn, my first, so I do want to take some pictures with my second. So, I found this at Target for $3, and it just has um, the time they were born, their weight, and all that stuff. And then I have a cute photo op outfit to go with that, along with like a matching blanket. Um, so that's just kind of one outfit there with a little hat. Um, I have a going home outfit. It just says little sister. I really hope it fits. You just never know what outfits are gonna fit your child. So just bring a couple. You don't need to get crazy. Um, again, the hospital will provide a lot of stuff. Your baby's gonna be pretty much swaddled. There is one item I do want to talk about though and that is these little shirts uh, I don't know where I got these I think my mom gave them to me with my first and I thought they were a little bit ridiculous but um, in the hospital if they just have this in their little diaper nurses can get to them they can get all their tests um, and if you have this under their sleepers like ones that zip or button all the way up you don't have to worry about like exposing like their whole bodies to like the cold air because then they can still have this little t-shirt on and you can still change their diaper. So I don't know where to get these. This is Gerber brand though. I would look for those. Um, I do have two swaddles, just a thin one and a thicker one, just depending on um, the temperature of the hospital and stuff like that. And then um, just two blankets. I even think this is probably a little bit overkill, but um, that's just something that I don't want to be without if it ends up being like, oh man, I wish I had this. I think for the most part, um, you can get by wishing you had brought something and being okay without it, but I feel like a blanket is one of those things that like, oh man, I really, I need this. So, um, I didn't bring any pacifiers with Evie, my first, but I am going to bring a couple of this go around and I just have like three in different sizes and different shapes, um, because I know that some babies don't even take to a pacifier and, um, they definitely don't take to the same brand or shape or style. I am bringing our own pillows and our own blankets because last time we were freezing and super uncomfortable and your poor husband who has to sleep on the bed definitely is gonna want another blanket and another pillow. So we are bringing those. I feel like those are a must. This item is gonna be controversial. Your boppy pillow, your nursing pillow, whatever brand pillow you have. Um, I feel like it's necessary even though I didn't use this to actually learn how to breastfeed because they like tuck a pillow up under you and they do all that with the hospital pillows. But for my husband who had never really held a baby before, it just provided some extra support um, so you could feel a little bit more confident because newborns are scary to hold. Um, they're just so fragile feeling. And then I also just put this like on the hospital bed between my legs and just like laid her in it and then we just got to like look at her all day long while she just like laid in here so and then of course your snacks I went 19 hours without eating and then I didn't even want to eat but bring your snacks especially right now during the pandemic like my husband might not even be able to leave the hospital room so we're gonna be packing extra snacks and probably even a cooler because that's how crazy it has been so real fast the three four four items that I want to talk about that nobody else has or has been mentioning are for me personally Nobody talks about how weak your core is after labor and delivery. Like, none of the moms that I saw today, except for maybe maybe one, one video I watched mentioned having some kind of support for your belly. Um, now, if you don't want the whole, like these are shorts and they go um, up to your belly because some people want loose clothing. Um, they have different options where you can just do the belly band, you can just do like a shapewear for your stomach, um, you can do the waist trainers. Um, if you like the tight idea with the shorts to keep like your pad and your hospital undies in place, by all means. These though saved my life. I got two of them from Ross for probably, I don't know, probably around $10 because I really don't spend more than that on, on, on much. So some kind of support for your core I think is so needed and nobody talks about. The second thing is this neat little tool. Um, this is called a car seat key and it's $15 on Amazon. I think the first time I saw it was on Shark Tank and um, I did not invest in this soon enough. Um, I just got my first acrylic pedicure, pedicure, sorry, manicure, and this just helps you get the car seat button opened up so that you, if, in case you can't get your nails, because you know, if you got those, then long mamas, then you definitely need to invest in this little tool, okay? Car seat key. Amazon, 
necessary. Some version of it, anyway. Um, next thing nobody really mentions, uh, my sister-in-law gave me this idea when she was pregnant with her first. Um, and that's just like a little thank you gift for all of the nurses that are handling you and all your gross nastiness. Um, I always like mine to be related to like the baby shower or my, my baby. So with my first I did little candles that were like cactus candles because that was her theme. And then this one, the baby shower was lemons. So just little boxes of lemon heads, you guys are 25 cents. And then you just stick a little thank you sticker on there and you just pass them out to whoever is dealing with you. Finally, the most important part, and I'm gonna do this so quick because I wanted this video to be short, but there's so much explanation. You got a teddy baby? And this person always gets left out, but they're doing a lot of the literal heavy lifting because I'm packing all of this up, but my husband's gotta carry it for me. So. I highly recommend getting your husband, your partner, your support system, your baby daddy, whoever is with you, who's been taking care of you, who's gonna be by your side, get them a care package, okay? It does not have to be crazy, but something so that they know that you are appreciative of them and um, just to make them feel a little bit more included and a little bit more special because, you know, being pregnant and going through labor and delivery, it is all about the mom, it's all about the baby, and the dad is just expected to suck it up and deal with it and wait on us hand and foot basically, right? So, I just have some of his favorite treats, some energy drinks to keep up because, yeah, we're doing all the work and stuff, but again, he's still expected to be by our side the entire time, which could be really hard. Um, anything that has, like, especially if he's a first time dad. Yes, baby. Especially if he's a first time dad, just something Fun. I found this dad hat. Uh, we have these socks that say dad life um, from two left feet. Those are like five bucks. Um, I've got a keychain in here that says dad somewhere. Um, his own little personal hand sanitizer. So when he is, you know, dealing with the baby or it's his turn to have the baby, he can have his own manly hand sanitizer. It's like a little camo pouch. Um, there's that keychain. And then, um, I did pack him some Z-Quil. I do want my husband to be arrested. Um, you know, moms, we kind of have it bad because nurses are always coming in and poking and prodding us. But we have this big, nice bed that is completely tailored to our needs as far as more pillows, more blankets, sit up, sit down, you know, whatever. Um, dads just have that pull-out couch in the hospital. So that kind of sucks. Um, a well-rested husband makes my life easier. So. Um, I also got this pillow spray. It's eucalyptus and mint, which is one of his favorite scents. And you just spray it on the pillow and then it's supposed to um, help him sleep better as a natural sleep aid. So, okay. So those are my tips for you guys. As a second time mom, keeping it very minimalistic and very real. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, please let me know. I don't think I did too much explaining or over explaining. So if there's something you wanna know more about, if you wanna criticize me for being gross and not showering, by all means. Um, but yeah, if you guys found this video helpful at all, please like, subscribe, do all that. Um, if you have any tips, tricks, whatever you want to share, please do so in the comments. Um, I know this is probably different than a lot of the videos out there and I wanted it to be, I just wanted to be you know, as realistic as possible, and just give you those three things that um, I really have not seen on a lot of the videos that I've watched. So, uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and good luck with your labor.